Uh, what's up, guys? It's been it's been a really long time. Really glad to be back streaming. Where? Uh, hang on, I still I I didn't even get the patch open yet. We're almost there. We're almost there. All right, we got it. Seven point three six C. Let me just make a Discord announcement. Dota Dota is updating, uh, and then it's gonna. I'll open it. Where's my uh, announcement? Send it at everyone ping. I don't use those too often. I feel bad about pinging people a bunch, but uh, it's useful for viewership. <laughs> All right, I'm launching. Third? I don't even see the uh, first and second. Did I not have the chat open yet? Or did it already show other people in here? I guess I do see people are already in here. What's up, guys? You guys just quietly sitting there? That's okay. I like to lurk. All right, Dota is launching. There we go. Oh, wait, guys, I forgot. Okay, first, let's get the music going. Is it working? Why are we not working? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Before, before I read the patch, I have to go put down the video I made that was gonna come out tomorrow. RIP 7.36 position four tier list. I gotta cancel its release. Unlisted, rip in peace. Position four tier list. All right. 7.36 C. Let me, uh... oh, full size camera. Let's go. Where is patch reading size? All right, guys, are we ready? We'll do this while standing. I'm kind of a little tired, but it is fine. This is the job. All right, item changes. Arcane blink, seven to nine seconds, reasonable. Arcane blink health restored, 200 to 250. Uh, that's fine. It's, it's literally just a nerf to Tinker, specifically. Arcane boots, mana regen, nerfed, okay, rip. That impacts us as a support. Bloodthorn, Soul Ren no longer deals damage if the silence is dispelled. Ooh. I wonder if Orchid will also have that effect. I don't see it on here, so I guess not. Uh, I assume that also applies to Orchid. Otherwise, that would be weird. That would be like a loss in value by upgrading your item. So I assume it's the same as Orchid. That's cool, it's like a counter. It's already important to Dispel Bloodthorn though because of how insane the damage is when you're being hit by it. But I guess all the more reason to now do it. And you're rewarded more for Dispelling. Phylactery, 200 more gold cost. Okay, that's fair. Glad we got to use it once at the, <laughs> the end of the stream. Conda, uh, okay, just the Phylactery cost. Ooh, Meteor Hammer, okay, what do we got? Mana region amp bonus decrease 75% to 50%. Storm is like the only guy building Meteor that I can think of right now. So that's a nerf to him. But the cost is decreased from 100 to 75 mana. 
This feels pretty targeted at Storm, and then maybe there's a few other people who are willing to build Kaya into it. I don't really understand that because as long as this item is built out of Kaya, in my opinion, it's mainly a core item. And the 25 mana save does not matter to the cores. It's not like, it's not like as a support player, I, I was thinking, I wish I could build Meteor Hammer, but ah, uh, damn, just 25 mana too much, you know? Who cares? I'm still not going to build a Kaya on almost any support. So I really, I don't understand that. I don't understand the identity of the item. Like if they're not going to lean into it being a core item, then take the Kaya out, but whatever. Radiance burn radius from 700 to 650. Okay. Revenant's brooch that really dropped off. Uh, Phantom's province mana cost is now affected by mana cost reduction. Oh, maybe someone's going to build Meteor Hammer with that. Okay. Silver Edge. Shadow Walk break duration increased from five to six seconds. Sure. It's not very, it's not a very popular item. Earn. Charges are no longer added when item is duplicated. Okay. Meepo's Pack Rat, Arc Wardens. So this is, this is specifically aimed at Arc Wardens Tempest Double then. Because I don't really think I saw many people even doing this on Meepo's Pack Rat. Like, I heard it was possible, but I never even saw it myself. But this is something that Arc Wardens would occasionally do if they were playing a more aggressive build. You would get Spirit Vessel, sometimes like Atos, Gleipnir, that kind of thing. And then you get two charges. You create your clone, and the clone just throws out charges. He just doesn't care. He's like, throw them everywhere. Because the next time you respawn... The clone you get the same amount of charges again as long as the main hero was not using them so that's very specific ban i guess they did not like that neutral items psychic push is now classified as a knockback effect okay that's just like uh that's just getting it to work with spear breaker and stuff like that pre-recording yeah it's all it's all fake this is all all done yesterday. I get given the patch notes ahead of time. I'm actually asleep right now. All right, hero changes. Let me think real quick. Okay, actually, before we read the hero changes, let me show you guys some of the tier lists. Let's let's imagine. Let's let's see what we would like. I would love Nature's. I I feel like he's just really weird. He's really weird. I'd like it to be buffed. Um, I know a lot of people like Dazzle. I feel like he's weird. I'd like him to be buffed. Jakiro, I think, has a decent pub win rate, so I don't expect him to get buffed. But I want him to. Uh, Venomancer, Plague Carrier. Specifically, Plague Carrier. I want that buffed. Because I want to try that out more. Fine Art, that one's a fun one. What about Position 4? You guys didn't even get to see this. Um... Still natures, maybe Muerta buff. Techie enjoyers, Techies enjoyers, maybe you can buff him up. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Mitch is a time traveler. He went back in time to get his message in here. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, let's get back to uh, back to the actual patch. <laughs> I switched just too soon for your message to get in. And ah, switching back. Oh, Invoker 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if Invoker 4 gets any changes. All right, guys. Tuga says hi. You still can't see it on the, the thing, but he says hi. Okay, Abaddon. Borrowed time. Aghanim Scepter range. Decrease. That's a big decrease. 300. Damage threshold increased a little bit. I'm going to say something insulting. This is like... Is this a change I'm too high MMR to understand? I can't tell you the last time I saw an Abaddon going Aghanims that it needed to be nerfed. <laughs> Abaddon is a pub winner, but I think it's for... I think it's for the, like... Average to lower ranked games where Abaddon is still finding a ton of success. 
in my games and like the immortal bracket abaddon is not common and i i cannot remember the last time i saw an abaddon ags so much that i had to be like nerf that shit 300 range <laughs> no offense guys i love you all thank you okay level 10 talent curse of avernus movement slow increased sure uh dps up by five wow okay aa ice blast exposure uh sorry exposure ice blast i don't know why i'm reading backwards cold feet aoe increased from 0 150 300 450 to 0 200 um we might try some aa i actually had a misunderstanding that cold feet was like it just did the damage in aoe but it wasn't like actually affecting people in the aoe but apparently it is it's an aoe cold feet which is really which is much better i don't know um let me see if i'm understanding this correctly i'm not oh because it's level one i'm stupid Wow, level them up and then reset. Sick. Ah, oh, it's based on Ice Blast level. All right, one more time, one more time. How does this work? What? Ah, there we go. Now it's AOE Ice Feet. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I think the fact that it's AOE, like the whole ability is AOE, is better than I realized. I still think he's not as good as other heroes, but we'll see what the nerfs and the bans end up changing. <laughs> I didn't know. I don't. I don't. I haven't touched him since they they changed it. Axe. Uh, one man army linker duration decreased from five to three seconds. Okay, that's fine. It's essentially uh, like five seconds of extra strength at the start of team fights when you would blink initiate first and you would get all the bonus strength. And then they made it start having a, a decrease in effect. And now they're shortening that from five to three seconds. So it's just getting worse and worse, which is fair. It was really good. Uh, level 10, culling blade speed, bonus duration decrease from four to three seconds. I don't even know which one people take, actually. Is it not the left one? Movement speed per active battle hunger? I don't even know. Level 20, culling blade damage decrease from 125 to 100. Okay. Track. Oh, you know, I do like Bounty Hunter. Duration decreased from 30 to 25 seconds. That's a nerf. Damage amplification decreased. Boo, they just nerfed him. I haven't even gotten to play him yet. Brewmaster. Roll out the barrel, cinder brew, barrel impact damage decrease from 50, 75, 100, 125 to 40, 60, 80, 100. So not a huge deal at level one, but bigger at max level. Uh, but this is the facet, so it won't even affect the other brewmaster, which is what? The drunken master. I actually don't know which is uh, more popular on this guy. I think it's this one. This is the one I see a little bit more, but... He's not that popular of a hero, so I don't know if I've actually seen it that many times. Uh, Ag Shard, bonus duration, down by four seconds. Okay. Centaur, really popular. Base health regen decreased from four to three. One entire HP per second. That sounded sarcastic. That's like a lot. That's a lot. The base HP regen is usually a very big deal, and one is a big decrease. And then Rawhide, they're adjusting this as well, 35 to 30. That's fair. Chaos Knight, strength gain decreased. Uh, talent strength decreased. So this is a lot of minor tweaks so far. Yeah, minor tweaks so far. Clockwork. Okay, he's one of the broken supports. Hookshot. Now applies the barrier to Clockwork himself, not just his allies. Okay, trying to make his other facet good. Power Cogs. Cooldown increase from 15 seconds to 21, 19, 17, 15. Mana burn decreased from 50, 80, 110, 140 to 35, 70, 105, 140. I max this shit anyways. Uh, definitely a nerf to expanded armature. I think maxing it just straight up 1357 is really good. 
I know some pros would still prefer battery assault, but I think just, uh, like at least in pubs, it was very effective. Just walk up, press W, kick the cogs around, and then it was only a 15 second cooldown and they lasted five seconds at level one. So by the time the cogs were done, there, it wasn't that much longer till you could just do it again and just keep doing damage, burning mana, being annoying. And I think that's fair. This is what, six extra seconds at level one and less mana burn, like 15 less mana burn, which is a big deal at the early levels. So I think that's a pretty fair nerf. I will say it is also nerfing hookup because this is just regular cogs. And the fact that expanded armature used them this way is kind of what made clockwork good. So they're trying to they're trying to nerf expanded armature, but at the same time, they've nerfed the hookup facet as well because he's gonna have worse cogs because of that. I guess this is the tricky part about balancing facets. Mm, I don't know if this will be enough. How much of the barrier do you get? Does it say equal to the hook shot damage? Oh, 75, 175, 275. <laughs> but I guess, I guess uh, it's 75% reduced cooldown when you hit. There's like a 15 second ult at level one ult. I guess it's not too bad. We'll try it. 100 mana. Actually, Clockwork kind of has mana issues. If you're going to use hook shot a bunch, you might need arcane boots actually. Because if you're trying to... Yeah, you're going to run out of mana or something, I think. Uh, and then what's this? Level 10 talent, power cogs. Three to two seconds, darn. I like that one. Rocket Flare is really good, too. That's going to be a tough level 10 choice. Well, I guess if you're not doing expanded armature, you're probably just going Rocket Flare. If you are, then I don't know. Okay, Dark's here. He's one of the best offlaners in the game right now. Heart of Battle... 1% less movement speed bonus from nearby heroes. Wall of Replica. Replica damage decreased. 10% mm, at max level. And then normal punch max stun duration decreased a little bit. I don't really think that's enough. Like if we go back, I think this one's pretty reasonable. I think Clock will still be okay, but not broken. Not broken as much. Because the level one Cogs, he just does it twice, which only took like 30 seconds. and Or it took 15 seconds. Like Cogs, within 15 seconds, he did it again. And you're you're out of so much mana if you hit multiple Cogs. Um, so I think level one Clockwork is way worse. These other ones are all relatively minor so far I, that I, I think. Maybe the Centaur base HP region matters. This does not feel as impactful i'm not a dark tier player but i feel like he'll still be okay his laning stage is still going to be good based on like just buying four gauntlets of strength i guess your late game is worse but i don't think it's a huge deal yeah the other facet i think it depends i think heart of battle is better for um like the fighting, the team fighting stuff. The other one that gives you attack speed is pretty good for the lane. So I think if you needed more lane presence, that facet was the way to go. If your lane was going to be okay, then Heart of the Battle was probably better. Okay, Dark Willow. Uh, Bramble Maze, additional brambles, duration from six to four seconds. That's getting rough because at max level... Latch root duration is 2.5 seconds. So there's only 1.5 second overlap of where you could go from a bramble, from one of the brambles to one of the potential outer brambles, these four extra from Thorny Thicket. And then it looks like Bramble Maze duration decreased from 15 to 12 seconds. Ah, oh, and this is no longer cast on allies. Ah, oh, rip. All right, position five Dark Willow is going to be a lot worse. I think position four Dark Willow is probably still okay. And you want to go Yule's Blink again pretty consistently. 
blink yules like some order of that because you need to be on top of the opponent to get bedlam value but position five dark willow does not want to have to build yules and blink so i think five might be a little more dead rip the tier list that just came out today i think the bramble change is not the end of the world if it was just the Bramble change, I'd probably keep her in S to A tier. But Bedlam, that one's painful. It most likely means your early game kills are going to be much harder. I've, won a I've done really well with Dark Willow prior to even having Bedlam, though. I think she'll still be okay as a position four. I don't know where she'll fall on the tier list until we actually try this out and feel it out, but I'm going to say A to B tier still, and I'll have to see how much this actually feels impactful. Because uh, 12 seconds is still a pretty good time, and then 4 seconds, like you still just need to hit them once to get the damage. So if you actually hit them with the outside one as they run in or something like that, like there'll still be situations, it's fine. I think, we'll see. Dragonite, cleave damage, up it again. Five more percent. Okay. Fire Dragon is just not good enough, and they're just going to keep buffing up the cleave damage. I don't know. How far do you think this is going to go? I, I don't think this will matter. I think Fire Dragon needs something else, not just more and more cleave damage. At some point, you get absurd amounts of cleave damage, then sure. But I don't think they'll get to that point, and then I think they're going to eventually add something else to this. They might give him just like five more base damage when he takes the fire dragon or something like that. I think that's what he needs before this becomes. I, I just having just like just having cleave does not compare to the others. I feel. I I don't know. I, I'm sure I can be proven wrong. Okay, Drow Ranger, multi shot projectile speed increased by one hundred. 10 talent, uh, 0.5 seconds CDR increase, uh, Gus self movement speed increased by 10%. I don't play much Drow and I haven't seen much Drow. I don't, I, I really don't know what her major issues are, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is enough, but she does need buffs. She's not that good or not that popular. I think she's good in certain matchups. Ember Spirit, bonus hero damage decreased by what? Five? Just a flat five. Okay, that's fine. Enigma, base movement speed down 10. We're going to jump him down 10 just right, right off the bat, just like that. Not increments of five, just 10. Eidolon's bonus health as a percentage of Enigma's health decreased from 4% to 3%. I forgot about that. Eidolon damage decreased. God, we got to do math. Okay, what is this? From 16 to 24 to 14 to 20. That's a pretty big nerf. What about at max level? At max level, it's actually the same on average, if I'm understanding that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's... The others are... Okay, so it starts off worse, a decent amount worse, but it ramps up to be pretty much the same at max level. Enigma now gives two walking tokens. <laughs> he can lose a little more movement speed before then. Okay, face is void, time zone. Okay, what are they, what are they gonna give to time zone, guys? Time zone is so, I don't know. It's so different from the core purpose of Faceless Void. 125 more cast range. Attack speed manipulation increased. Wow, 20 more attack speed at level one. Like they're just gonna give it numbers. And the radius oh, is gonna increase Thank from you. 800 to 900. Let's go look at this guys. Let's go see how people wide this is. Possum Guts, thank you. Thank you for the Prime sub. How many Possum Guts do you think could fit in 
Times Square. It's pretty big. This is so weird. Seeing a square overlaid with a circle. I feel like I'm playing some math school game or something. Try to teach the kids geometry. I just, I still can't see a world where you're not getting Chronosphere as a faceless void position one. I can see value to time zone for support void. Maybe an off lane void. I don't know. I really feel like any core void would just go Chronosphere. The thing is, you can make time zone really good, but if my lane is over every single time trying to get to time zone, it's not gonna be any good. They need to add some kind of support facet to time zone. They need to make time dilation better on time zone or something, or give him like six more HP regen or some bullshit like that. Now, nah, don't give him that much, actually. Then core, core faces void would do it. Well, at least you can't four staff yourself out of there anymore, right? But can't you still just boots of bearing it? I don't know, guys. I never see this shit. Sick. I don't know, I don't know guys. <laughs> I, I, they need to buff. They need to buff support void in some way before we're going to see time zone in any meaningful capacity, I think. Hoodwink, Acorn Shot. Mm, they're going to nerf the attack range by 50 at max level. It's just a 50 flat, actually. Uh, that's... Okay, that's adding up. They're tired of Hoodwink, I guess. Invoker, Mastermind. Now also triggers if units under Invoker's control. It didn't count that before? No wonder why he was ass. I didn't realize it had to be specifically Invoker. That seems more like a bug. This seems like a bug fix, not like, oh, we're going to add the feature of the, the units he controls can now deny, and that'll give him XP. That sounds like a bug that it wasn't. Because when your, when your uh, summons get last hits, it doesn't not show your last hits. It pops them up there. That seems like a bug. All right, well, now that it works, I guess that's good. Maybe, I mean, how much damage do you get out of these guys again? Because that used to be a build. I mean, it kind of still is, but Quas Wex is pretty popular now. Um, but uh, the... These guys, I don't know why I leveled up so high. Let me, let me start at just level two. 22 extra d damn what the you're so fast since when are you so fast look at you go buddy since when i swear they used to be slow and it's been a long time since i played invoker or i just don't remember this the golem's so fast now or the forge spirit damn Uh, let's see you get like 10 extra denies. Well, I don't know. Uh, that seems like a bug fix hidden as a feature. I guess it's good. I mean, it's, it's good. I, I don't think it'll be that meaningful. It's, it's going to give him, I don't know, like 10 more denies in the laning stage that weren't being attributed to him before. Which will which will matter, but also is not the biggest deal in the world. I feel the child's running away from the father. <laughs> Legion commander, spoils of war, assist bonus damage increased, 
Now it's 5, 10, 15. I, the other one's just still better, isn't it? You have to know that the barrier does not matter in your lane. And it also won't matter anywhere else. But it always does. Maybe if you have some really right-click focused team, it's kind of cool. Giving out some extra damage to everyone. I just feel the other one seems a lot better. Only good if your supports are right clickers. Yeah, like who? Uh, maybe like Snapfire. Let's see. A, a, who are who are some good supports for this? What if you had? So there you are. Your Pudge Four helping you out in the duels. Ooh, Lion. How about Lion now, guys? Get that right click damage in there. Touch people. Uh, Marcy, Wind Ranger, Marana, maybe like Dark Willow. I guess there's a couple where it's kind of cool. Shikuchi or uh, Weaver, not Shikuchi, Weaver, Clink support if he's if he ever comes back. Hoodwink just like racking up the damage. Natures. I guess there's some that is cool. I don't know though. Stone Hall plating just seems so good. Sniper support with assassinate. There you go. We're getting into some real pub strats. So there we are. The Legion takes spoils of war. 50 minutes later, sniper support's gonna have 50 extra damage for assassinate. That's such a pub strat. Lushrak, lightning storm, cast range, decreased by 50. Okay, whatever. Lich. Lich is pretty good. What are they gonna do to him? Keep in mind, he's not very popular with the pro scene, just pubs. Frostbound duration decreased by half a second. And then, oh, this one's actually a buff. Illusions killed are now treated as creep kills. Oh no, maybe it's a nerf. Maybe it counted illusions as heroes. I'm not sure. If this didn't count for anything, then this is a buff. If it did count as heroes, then that's clearly a nerf. Funniest part of spoils of war is the whole enemy team gets damaged if he dies. So I agree. And then like, that's the thing, right? There's no downside to stone hall plating. You don't have to be worried about that. You're just tankier. So even if you don't win the duel, you just live and you're healthier. The other one is more reward, more risk. And I just, I just feel the barrier is going to be a lot better. No, I have like too many cups here. I just like, grabbed the wrong cup. Okay, Life Stealer. Corpse Eater. Max health bonus per kill decrease from two to one. That doesn't sound like a lot from two to one, but it's a 50% nerf, like cut in half. Now, it's not that crazy to see like 600 extra health, stuff like that from the, from the, the facets. So now that's down to 300. No longer increases max health when killing other unit types. Oh yeah, I heard about this as people were joking about trying to farm stuff up. I don't know how many people actually did it. I think that's fairly minor. Ah, but you get five max health from killing heroes. That's whatever. I, who cares? Five max health. They need to bump this way the hell up. That's five creeps. So you're going from, let's say you had 300 last hits. Uh, or a mix of last hits and denies. Who cares about heroes, right? So you went from 600 health to 300. And then if you have 10 kills, that would be pretty good. 350. That's still 250 health loss. So that's a really big nerf. I don't, this is like whatever. I mean, it's not whatever, it's something. And the hero's good, so it's balancing. They're trying to like take it away without destroying it. They're giving it something from hero kills. This feels too small. Uh, but whatever, he's good anyway, so nerf him, sure, whatever. Open wounds, max slow, 50% down to 35%. That's pretty meaningful at level one. 
Lone Druid, unbearable. True form. Bonus attack speed increased by 5%. Okay. Um, I don't even know which is the one they take. I know one was considered good and the other one was bad. I suppose the fact that this got buffed means it was the bad one and the other is the better. Yeah, the other one is like the bear gets armor and healed and stuff. Mars, Victory Feast, Arena of Blood, Health Restored, increase from 20% to 30%. I think the other one's just better, though. Just not being able to see people in Arena. It matters when it matters. I said that before, and it sounds silly, but if they're not BKB'd, or, like, switch it. If they're BKB'd, they're getting out of Arena, so it didn't matter that you could still see them. Like, your teammates could see the vision in the Arena, it's when the target doesn't have BKB that you need to save them in the arena. If they have BKB, you don't care. They, they just leave. So it mattered when it mattered. And I think it's pretty good in terms of preventing, potentially preventing saves on that hero more than healing yourself. 30% is a lot, I guess. If Mars is in the arena when an enemy dies inside of it, Oh, but an enemy has to die. And then you get the heal. And it's just him, right? It's not his allies? Ah, I don't know. The other one's better than... You always get the value of the other one. You don't have to get a kill in it. I guess there's potential for crazy healing. And then, yeah, there's the 20% attack damage buff. Sorry, you guys can't even see the extra description. But I don't know. The fact that a hero has to die in there. I think the other one's still better. Units outside can't see in the arena when he takes the other facet. Unless the target inside has BKB. Or a hero on the outside can see inside. For example, you rocket flare the inside. You can see that because an outside hero has vision inside the arena. But the units inside the arena cannot share their vision outside of the arena. Can heroes inside see outside? No, they can't. They can't either, as far as I understand. Because you don't share, you don't share the vision. Here, we'll go do it. We'll go test. You don't share vision, so the things inside shouldn't be able to see outside. Yeah, so I'm inside, so I lose vision of all this stuff. In the same way, when he he does this, we can't see in the arena. I actually don't know if you place an observer. Oh, yeah, you can. Okay. Interesting. Should it be that way? I guess it's fine. Oh, interesting. There's like a... <laughs> there's a middle area where I guess you just can't see either side. Okay, Medusa, Mana Pact, Mana Shield, attack speed bonus per second from 3 to 3.5%, max attack speed increase from 30 to 35%. This is where you activate this and you drain some mana, right? I don't know. Do you ever want to do that to yourself? It's a lot easier to pay a health cost and lifesteal off of that than it is to pay a mana cost and restore that amount of mana. It's way easier to lifesteal huge amounts. So burning off a significant chunk of mana for Medusa, where mana equals survivability, I don't know if this is really enough. What's her other facet? Engorged. Mystic Snake now grants Medusa attack damage. That seems like safer. Naga Siren. Oh, nature's is coming, guys. I'm excited. Okay. Naga Siren. Deluge. Cooldown decreased. This is supposedly... Or, I guess they didn't say, but this is my theory crafted. This is the support facet. Deluge. 7 second cooldown, 5 second duration, 260 damage. I guess that's a good chunk of damage. 
while also hitting them with a 20% status resistance reduction. Maybe we can explore Naga support a bit more. All right, let's see what they're doing in natures. I don't think he's very good right now. Soothing saplings, sprout heal per second rescaled from 12, 20, 28, 36 to 10, 20, 30, 40. Two hundred forty heal. But Ironwood Trant. Trant damage increased by four on each level. From twenty two thirty to twenty eight to thirty two. That is a significant jump. But it's reinforced damage type, right? 76 to 80. Nature's call. Trant damage increased by two on each level. 11 to 15, 13 to 17. Wait, what did I say this total healing was? 160 is what it is now. Hmm. I speak for the tree. No Naga support, I beg. No, no, no. L listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Naga support is way more established than Terror Blade support. It's totally different. Totally different. <laughs> reinforced units and buildings deal bonus damage to other reinforced units and buildings. Take less. So I'm pretty sure he does less damage to things than he usually would. Is it because you have no armor? Oh no, maybe it's the same damage. I forget the rules. Is it just the amount of damage he takes? Hero attack damage reduction, 50%. Oh, what does target dummy count as? Maybe that's the weird part. 26. Is that right? Oh, I don't know why I'm so dumb. First of all, I'm not even showing you guys what I'm looking at. Second of all, this is how much damage he is taking. I feel like I knew that, and then I tried to read, and that was my mistake. I can't read, and the reading the words confused my little brain. So he does the normal amount of damage to most things, but bonus damage to other reinforced stuff. Go hit the tower. I mean, I know it's good versus tower. I've seen, I've, I've seen that. It's more that? just Thank you. how do you get to that point? Pog check. Hmm. Yo, what's up, Daddy? What's up? Fifty damage at level one, tanking it himself. Wait, here's where. Ah, oh, shit, we don't have the healing, I forgot, because we took the other facet. I mean, it is a lot. It's a lot. If we play a game after reading the patch, maybe it'll be Nature's with the tree. Okay, Necrophos. I should set up a hotkey to switch between these two another time. Rapid Decay, Ghost Shroud. Movement speed gained from enemy loss, increased from 25 to... <laughs> It's always funny to see when there are big increases in numbers because it means it means there was an idea and it was shit. And they're like, oh, God, it's got to go way up. We were so wrong on the estimation. We thought 25% was be good. Just bum that shit up to 40%. <laughs> I mean, you'll be zooming as Necrophos. Let's go. Let's go demo that. I still think the other one is better. The one that increases your spell AOE but it'll probably look pretty funny. Let's get like maxed out.
<laughs> Look at me go. 373 move speed. I didn't even take any. I didn't even have boots. These guys didn't even have boots. Hey guys, how would you like boots? Boots. Boots. 450 move speed Necrophos speed car racer. There'll be some funny clips of Necrophos booking it. The school bell just rang. Mm, time to go home and play Call of Duty with the boys. Just zipping out of there. Night Stalker. Crippling Fear now only starts costing mana per second with Aghanim Scepter if the duration is extended past its normal end. That was a mouthful. What? Now only starts costing mana per second with Aghanim Scepter if the duration... Ex oh, oh, okay. Okay, I got you. That makes sense. Mana cost with Aghanim Scepter is now always 6%. Okay, the old... So Crippling Fear has like a flat duration, which you would just activate for, for whatever. It's like 50 mana, right? Yeah, 50 mana. It would last like six seconds. And then once you got the Aghanim, I guess it became toggleable. So is this a buff to the Ag? Did Night Stalker need to be buffed? So now you activate it. It's going to be 6% of your mana, which what's uh at what point does that overcome the 50... The current 50 cost. When you have 833 mana. But you won't be charged until you go over like the six seconds or three seconds in the daytime. Okay, Hunter in the Night, Aghanim Shard, max health restore, decrease from 30 to 25. Dark Ascension no longer refreshes. Oh, that's a big one. I was wondering. I was like, this isn't really a nerf. This one's not really like that big of a nerf either. Night Stalker is one of the best offlaners. This one, that's kind of a kick in the balls for Night Stalker. <laughs> talent, level 10 talent. Dark Ascension duration decreased. Um, I still think he's probably okay. Maybe not this S tier hero, but the fact that you can take Night Reigns to have a way stronger laning stage, and you just, you won the lane before you even hit six. He's probably still A or B tier. But I guess you do lose a lot of double void potential, double crippling fear potential. It's probably still good though. Conda Night Stalker's probably dead. That's that's I think that's fair. Well, we say that. It's gonna take even if it's true, it's gonna take at least six months for that to catch on in pubs. They're still gonna be going to Conda. Alright, this this is a pretty big nerf. I think Night Stalker will still be a decent offlaner. We'll just have to see where it ends up being though. Omni Knight. Omnipresent, degen aura, damage, increase, interval, decrease from 0.4 to 0.3. How the hell does this thing work again? Oh, I had it on the wrong stuff anyways. Omni Knight's damage to a target is increased by 1% for every 0.3 seconds they spend affected by the aura. How big is the aura again? 300? It said here, I didn't have to go to that page. So 0.3 seconds. So let's say you chase someone for five seconds. Sixteen percent increase in damage. I guess that sounds okay. But previously you already had 12% amp in that time. So it's 3% more damage amp in the same time for at least that five second, which is not that big of a deal.
considering Omni Knight is not considered that good. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. I forgot it was already like it already existed at twelve point five. All right, that still doesn't seem enough for the hero. Oracle, clairvoyant, cure, cure. I was about to say curse, curse. <laughs> Heal amplification decrease one percent the point. Ah, whatever. Okay. Pango duration. 2.75 to 2.25. Half second less. Okay. Swashbuckle slash range decreased. Okay. Talent crash barrier per hero. Yeah, nerf this shit. It's crazy how much barrier you can get now. Nerf, nerf, nerf. Okay. He'll still be okay, but I'm glad he's getting some nerfs. PA, two more base damage, and... Man, 20% starting evasion. That's wild. I know it's her thing, but... Talisman of evasion is how much again? It's 20%. Tw Talisman of evasion is 1,300 gold. So it's like she's just starting with 1,300 gold in terms of evasion. That's so crazy. And I know other heroes have, like, the balance of, like, oh, he does more damage with innate ability, whatever. That's also dam that's also money, technically. I get that. But just seeing it so clearly of 20% evasion equals talisman of evasion, that's wild to just start with it. Still not a great hero, though, so I guess it's not that good. Pudge, Flayer's Hook, no longer increase meat hook projectile. No! Ah, oh, man, back to the slow hook. That's too bad. I feel like that's part of why that was good. I mean, it it was, but uh, what else is here? Flesh heat, bonus strength, decreased uh, 0.3 at level one. This one's retroactive, right? I'm pretty sure it is. Meat shield, duration decreased by one second, level 10 slow. Uh, okay, okay. I guess it's fine. I don't know. I guess it's it, it's more important to have setup for Flayer's hook. Because as long as you have setup, the speed of the hook is not as big of a deal. And as long as you can get the early kills, you'll get going. But losing, just straight up completely losing the projectile speed is kind of sad. Couldn't they have like just cut it down? Does it say what it was before? I don't remember how they changed it, but we could probably go dig it up later. But um, that is, it's sad to lose that. It was good for just such a short amount of time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of griefy again. Not full grief, but it's more likely to end up that way if you can't land the hooks. Okay, Razor, Storm Surge, damage increased from 40, 80, 120, 160 to 50, 90, 130, 170. 10 more damage, sure. Sand King, all right. Is Sand King going to exist as a hero for a week or are they continuing to kill him off? Dust Devil, Sandstorm speed now increases when Sand King is outside it, up to 125% of Sand King's move speed. Sandstorm DPS up at max level 15 more at max level but it's the same at early levels now increases when sand king is outside of it as in it it chases him faster right By the waste. It's so tiny at level one. I forgot about this. <laughs> Still kind of slow, but let's let's get some like other items in here. Just the fact that it doesn't do the same. The fact that it doesn't stun while moving anymore if you're outside of it is just a bit sad. 
Was he that broken that he couldn't be allowed to exist for more than a week? Hmm. I guess the fact that it speeds up does make it a little hard to run out of it. Possible, but... It's not too bad. Maybe that gives a bit more functionality. Especially with an Ags. When you're just moving in fights. Especially if you're like attack clicking heroes as you go. Bop. Bop. Right? Then you're probably staying in the Sandstorm much more consistently. Bop. Bop. Oh, I forgot I didn't teleport to you anymore. All right, let's keep going. Shadow Fiend, one of the best carries in mids, or at least one of the most popular. Shadow Mire, Shadow Raise, move slow, rescaled from 8% to 5, 6, 7, 8%. Attack speed slow, also rammed that way. I kind of forgot that it slowed your attack speed. I mainly remembered the damage amp plus move speed. I, I forgot about this. I think it was added with this facet. Necromastery no longer increases souls when killing other unit types, wards, cog. So, okay, again, I, I think that was kind of niche case. Shadow rays, bonus per stack decreased. Ooh, that's a big decrease at level one. It's the same afterwards. Okay, I think that's good. Level 25 talent, feast of souls, cast speed bonus decreased from 40 to 30%. I kind of wish they made Necromastery max souls have a scaling element to it as well. I I think that is a big part of why he's so strong right now. Not being able to threaten shadow rays kills as much is still good, but I feel it's this innate ability that's made him so strong. Like you just shadow raise the first couple levels and suddenly you have so much extra damage to work with and you're just denying people left and right. Silencer, Arcane Curse, Mana Cost, Rescaled, 130, 135, 140, 145 to 120, 130, 140, 150. Interesting. Cheaper at level one, but more expensive at max level. Global Silence. Ag Scepter Arcane Curse Duration is now set to current global silence duration instead of always six. What? Oh, you could have level one Ags and it would be giving you six seconds even though your silence was only 4.5. That's weird. Uh, I don't even know why. This, <laughs> this sounds another like another bug fix. Um... This might be okay, because you can spam out Arcane Curse more in the laning stage. A little bit. Just a little bit. But the early lane matters a lot, and if you get kills, you're getting intelligence. And if you have intelligence, it'll make up for this five extra mana cost at max level. I think that's okay. I think I'm going to consider this overall a buff. But if you don't ever get kills then it's going to hurt because you do sometimes have mana issues because your ultimate is insanely expensive. I think it's one of the most expensive ults. Is it not? Yeah, 600 mana at max level. Slark, Dark Reef Renegade, Barracuda, Linger Duration, Up. Um, 1.5 seconds in the early lane. That's pretty good. That's like 10 extra health you're gonna get. Right? How then they buffed this recently? Yeah. 10 extra health in terms of sustain, but also for one one second longer, uh six percent more move speed. So if you're you're trying to kill someone by like running around the trees and you pop out, that's an extra second to close the gap without having to use pounce. Linger search radius also decreased. That's uh that's nice for Slark. I can't believe I'm saying that.
Slarks. <laughs> that is good for the hero, though, I think. Yo, Atomo, what's up? I haven't... I was, I was talking about this the other day. You, like, run into people doing the casts, but you're all doing your own times, and you all get into it. That You don't actually talk with the other people, but I, I want to. Uh, nice, thanks for dropping by, dude. Uh, we gotta we gotta chat sometime. It's funny like being in the same circles, but then like not actually talking. <laughs> Which is probably on me. I should probably just say hi to people. <laughs> it's weird. I would do it in person, but like in Discord servers and stuff, it's like a different experience. I don't know. Uh, Snapfire. Okay, let's see what's happening here. A uh, little shredder attack damage, five percent more. Ooh. Level 25. Okay, and they're taking it. That's fine. Most games don't even get to 25. So what, how much damage does this do at level one? Let's check. Let's check real quick. That's true. If you're like both play-by-play -play or both analysts, you don't really interact much. Um. Okay, little shredder. 20 damage plus... 30% of my base attack damage, which is 54, but I'm universal. So if I were to buy some stuff like this. Um, see, four armor is pretty, pretty normal. Two fifty-one. It's not too bad. 24 second cooldown. And as you continue to level up, the scaling should get a little better. Let's just leave it at this for now, item wise. 320. Okay, what about max? 500, and then whatever your actual damage is. Hmm. Wait, were there no Phoenix changes? Wow, no Phoenix changes. Because I was, I was just thinking, Snapfire is a pretty common pick against Phoenix, and maybe then you would max a little Shredder to have it against the Egg for the extra attack range. And then because of that, you then get more damage out of it. You know, so I was trying to like make a case for it. Phoenix didn't get nerfed. So maybe we are playing more Snapfire. That's crazy. No, yeah, Tomo, you're great. Don't don't even sweat it. I'm there listening in while Ricky and I are waiting. <laughs> so I do get to hear it or uh, when we were doing it. We're on a little break now, but yeah, you're fine. Don't sweat it. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Let's turn the zoom back on for this. Okay, we're gonna, hold on, uh, before I forget, for the heroes we've looked at so far, let's, um, you're out. Actually, <laughs> she was probably fine. Uh, snap fire, let's keep it in consideration. Naga, that one's probably a meme still, but I wanna at least, I want to at least think on it. Um, we already have natures in here. I think Willow will be okay, but I'm not that interested in being the one to explore it and figure it out. So I'll let someone else deal with that before we go back to it. Sniper, scatter shot. Okay, I think this thing's garbage. Let's see what I got. Are, is this the garbage one? Yeah, 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 this one's garbage. Shrapnel move slow increased from 30, 40, 50, 60 to 30, 45, 60, 70. This thing's garbage. <laughs> I don't know. Has anyone found success with this? I think this thing is so garbage. 
It doesn't make any sense to me. It turns Shrapnel into a one second ability and totally loses the zone control. So it's like, okay, we'll do a decent amount of damage in that time. I guess 280 damage maxed out. Who cares? 15% more moves flow. Who cares? Losing the zone control. I, that seems so bad. Yeah, like give it, either give it more DPS and keep it at one second, but the DPS has to be really high or it's got to have some other effect or you need to increase the duration like a little bit. Ah, this is still bad. I w 75 slow is a lot, okay? I I'll say that. It's a lot, but it's only one second. And it still has like the delay, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure it still has the delay before it comes. To, oh, we can just go, we can just go tech. But it, it means you could still miss. <laughs> and then your your zone control is not even there. You're not like, oh, it was a zoning 10 seconds slow. That's it, guys! <laughs> The sound effect! The sound effect is just the stuff. That's it. <laughs> I can't. Oh, let's put a hero. Let's put a hero in there at least. Okay, here's Mars. Um, here, I'll I'll zoom out so that you get the better the the vibe of it. That doesn't even seem like a second. That's so short. I would rather have a support sniper take ghillie suit. Spectre. Desolate bonus damage increased. Flat five, okay. And desolate damage talent has increased a little bit. Desolate got a change to make it easier to get, right? Uh, bonus damage whenever Spectre does not have anything nearby, blah, 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 blah. Wasn't there something that made it easier to get Desolate damage? Is it one of her facets? Desolate can deal partial damage to enemies and is applied by Spectral Dagger. Maybe it's this one. If an enemy has only non-hero allies nearby, it will take 60% of Desolate's damage. So like in the lane, if the four support roams, you're maybe hitting the off laner for 60% of Desolate, which 25, oh God, math, 15 damage. Well, that's, that's going on. That's like a nice extra chunk of damage, I guess. 15 damage, pure too. Hmm. Maybe, maybe that's starting to be good. Like five doesn't sound like a lot, but in the landing stage, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of significant. Um, It adds up. Spirit Breaker, he's really good. What are we doing? So we're actually making his early charges cheaper. So your laning stage is better, but by the time you max it out, it's 20 more mana. Nether strike cooldown up by five seconds. I don't think that's too bad. I think he's still pretty good. It's been a little bit since I've played Spirit Breaker though, so I don't I don't remember having massive mana issues on this hero, which makes me think 20 on charge not that bad. However, you do charge quite a lot, uh, especially once it's maxed out. You're charging to farm and it's 20 more every time. I guess that will add up five charges now when you used to be able to do six. So maybe you need to buy an extra clarity or something or casual raindrop, things like that, maybe a little more often. Uh, depending how big of a mana nerf this feels like, that that's probably the more impactful thing. I think the five seconds on the ultimate is not that bad. In fact, the times I feel I have mana issues is the start at level one, level two charge. And that part's better or at least the same. It might be overall fine, I feel. 
Pokemon while on the bike. Do you guys know my, uh, I do other countries. Do you guys do high school, like yearbook quotes? I don't even know. That might be an American thing. My American high school yearbook quote is uh professor Oak in the first game when you try to use items indoors. And he says, uh, there's a time and place for everything, but not yet. That was my, that was my senior year quote. Do other countries do that? Is that a thing? We don't even have yearbooks. <laughs> I guess it's an American thing. <laughs> Storm static slide. Nerf this. Remnant speed slower. Can now be toggled to alt cast to always place remnant at Storm Spirit's position. Oh, the utility of it is like a buff though, isn't it? Well, that's not too bad anyways. Galvanize. Leveling gives you three charge instead of five. Ooh, that's kind of a big deal. Static remnant, vision radius decrease from 500 to 100. Whoa, they're blind as me now. It's like they had you just took off their glasses and now they're just like, is that a hero? I don't know. That's an interesting nerf. I did not think they would go in that direction for that. Oh, who's that? Thank you. I guess it kind of makes sense with static slide because you could use it as scouting, which is pretty good. Yo, Biomanic, thank you for the prime sub. Taking the money from Jeff Bezos. Give it to me. Thank you. I did not expect this kind of nerf to him. Is this overkill? I mean, these others are already starting to target him. Five hundred to one hundred. That's a lot. The scouting is seriously dead. Okay, well, I it is what it is. Interesting. Stormy weather. Magic vortex applies. Hmm. Makes his other facet worse too. Yeah, the hero the hero's really good around static slide because static slide makes his laning stage more consistent. So when you nerf the innate ability and static remnant, it is like the other facet already wasn't good and now the hero is also worse. So I'm surprised they didn't buff that facet in some way. But maybe later. I, I guess I don't know the date on that one specifically off the top of my head. Sven, I like that CK. Rune Sage, at the start of this, I unlisted my position four tier list. It didn't even come out yet. It was going to come out tomorrow. Dead. Dead before arrival. Oh, well. So goes content creation. Sven, heavy plate. Now we got the stream, which I hadn't planned. So I guess, you know, give and take a little bit. Sven, I don't get the hours I spent on that back, though. <laughs> heavy plate. Warcry, physical barrier amount increased from 50, 100, 150, 200 to 60, blah, 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 blah. It's up by 240 at the end. Base damage reduction decreased from 25 to 20. Oh, yeah, this is a really funny one. Heavy plate. Do you think there's space for support, Sven? My you. What's the innate again? Attacks deal 17% bonus damage to stunned enemies. Oh, no, that's... That's definitely a core Sven type of talent. Innate ability, I guess. Um, nah, probably. Probably still just a core Sven world. Ah, Jupiter, come here. You caused us to lose a game earlier, a double down. Don't even want to show yourself on stream. What a punk. Doesn't want to do his part. Takes, takes, takes. Does not give. Classic cat. That's how I know. That's how I know he's a carry player at heart. TA. Refraction. Barrier per instant. Yeah, nerf the shit. What is it? 20, 30, 40, 50, 230. So stronger at the early lane, but uh, you, you max this out pretty quickly anyways. So it'll be a nerf for most of the game after the first few minutes. I think that's that's fair. 
This barrier shit is wild. Uh, she's so annoying to deal with. Entity ran in TI qualifiers. What? The uh, the supports vent? Really? I didn't catch that. I'll have to go take a look. You know that Pango's innate makes Snapfire less likely to glancing shot him? What? <laughs> Nearby enemies have reduced chance for their random effects to happen to Pango. I totally forgot about this innate ability. I didn't even remember it. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Now that I remember his innate ability, that makes sense. They did? Okay, maybe I'll have to go check it out, how they decided to do it. I like Entity. I think it's really fun that they made it to TI. Um, I think they bring some like fun, fun drafts and strats that we talk about and then people don't do. Like the Monkey King stuff. They're really good. They At one point, like Ricky and I were interviewing them in one of the casts. They're like, yeah, that's our favorite strategy. Like, that's awesome, you know? A bunch of teams don't do that kind of stuff. Sven support. I, I feel like they they have their ideas they like. They run Bane and Grimstroke more than other teams when no one else wants to do it. I like that they have their own identity. So I think that's hype. Entity fan. It actually makes Snap stronger against him. That is true. I guess... I mean, that's fine. It's fine to have some weird interactions like that. I say some. We have an insane amount. But I suppose you'd have to code it to go the other way. Like, you're more likely to glancing shot him. That's such a pain. Okay, Tidehunter. Krill, Eater. Base strength up by two. All right, sure. <laughs> Kraken Shell. Damage block. Rescaled. Uh, one less at level one. GG. End but five higher maxed out. Okay, 75. So that's a good amount. Uh, what's the threshold? Oh, there's only a threshold with the right facet, isn't there? The tide is rolling out. Oh, no, 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 it just didn't say. How come it doesn't say on the thing? No, they did remove it. Oh, it's innate ability. Right, right, right. Sorry, you guys can't see it. I have to keep remembering to swap between the zoom in and the zoom out. Takes 500 damage. Even if they are not generally purgeable. I don't remember reading that one. Does that mean you can remove things like duel and axe call? You can't usually. Mm, how do we do this? Axe call. Everybody gets set. I go forward. What level of Dagon does five hundred burst straight up? Factoring in magic resistance, maybe this is fine. Huh, that one did not seem to work. I heard the noise, but it didn't purge that one. What is one that is purgeable, but... Even if they are generally not purgeable, what is an example of that? I guess I'm not going to dig through to test every single one right now, but I am curious what that what that is. Timber saw, twisted chalk room. Yeah, nerf this. Cast range is now the furthest range the chalk room can go instead of the middle of its travel path. That's not a nerf. That's just a quality of life change, like a mechanic not a mechanic, just how you use it. That probably, that's, that's probably a buff. Because <laughs> if you have to aim it, essentially like a skill shot, that's, uh, that's better. Now that you can cast further, it's easier to accurately aim where you want to go. Does 
Isn't that half the range? No, no, I think it means before you aimed at half the cast range point, you aimed at the halfway and then it shot beyond where you could cast. Now, I think the cast range is the same, but you can choose the further point and we can test real quick. It's not a massive patch this time, so we won't be here for 20 hours if we do little tests like this. Yeah, it, it goes the same distance. Meow. Better get ready. Can I call this back? No. Okay, Tinker. Yeah, nerf it. Translocator, dispel type from strong to basic. Is that gonna kill him, kill him though? I Don't get me wrong. I understand the hate on Tinker, but he's also not, you don't see him that often, I feel. At least I don't. Maybe maybe this is, again, another one of those, am I too high MMR to understand this change? Uh, that's a big nerf. That's a big nerf to how people were playing Tinker, along with the Arcane Blink change. Level 15, 250 AoE changed with 40 laser damage level 25 80 laser damage replaced with 250 aoe i thought people were going defense matrix anyways with translocator actually maybe that talent's worse maybe that's a fake because you want it to strong dispel you or you did hmm It was AoE laser. Hmm. Well, you won't have the option anyways, at least now. So Maybe this is going to push us more towards heal tinker. Too bad they didn't buff that. Tiny crash landing toss. This thing does a bunch of damage. So we're going to, what, nerf the move slow and nerf the attack slow. 15 at level one, same at the end. It still gives you the bonus landing damage, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm oh, sorry, someone, I'm trying to remember to zoom in. And now, someone, who, whoever said it, whoever's sitting in bed, for sure, this one's for you. I gotta remember to zoom in so you can read it. Ah, you know what's disappointing, guys? One of the rooms in this, uh, this rental house had a uh, TV mount already installed and they didn't remove it. So it just needed TV brackets. So I was kind of interested. I was like, oh, maybe I can get the TV brackets and then stick it on um, the TV we have. But I didn't know what brackets to get. So I, I called the company or I emailed them because it said, hey, if you want to buy replacement brackets, just send us your model and uh, like we'll tell you which ones you need and you can order it. I was like, okay, cool. So I send him a picture of it. It's like, I don't know what model this is, but do you know? And can I buy replacement brackets? They were like, no, we don't know what model, but also each bracket is specific to the model and we definitely don't sell that anymore. So you can't do it. And I'm like, nuts. So now it's no longer a free TV mount. Now it's just space I got to remove <laughs> from my own wall. <laughs> oh, well. Tree and protector, nature's guy, shard no longer. Ah, what? Taking away his move speed? The extra move speed? I couldn't even tell you guys how much it was before. Is it 12%? No, you already get that. That's from the innate ability. I don't know. I can't even remember how much the shard bumped up the move speed. That's, I, I, I don't mind. It's, it's another change that, like, he's only good with sampling. Don't you get universal TV brackets? Maybe... But do I want to risk my TV with a bracket not fitting the mount? I don't know. That's what I was that's what I was worried about, guys. <laughs> I could make the bracket connecting to the TV is fine. The bracket connecting to the 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 mount is the the part I'm worried about. I don't want it to just like crash cuz it's it's the wrong fit. That's what scares me. 
I don't think this is a huge deal to the hero if you're taking the sapling. And it, we're relatively new to all this facet stuff, so it's fine. But prime, primeval power, nerfing the core hero who already does not, not core. I mean, like the, the fundamental basics of the hero, right? Who the hero is, ignoring facets, right? Nerfing the hero when this facet's already bad means like no one's going to do it. So I wish they had more like targeted sapling or something a little bit more. Just place the TV on my lap. That's a great idea. <laughs> just hang on to it. The TV is just a, <laughs> I'll, okay. Even though I just said that it's a, it's just like a Roku TV. It's not that expensive, <laughs> but still, I don't want to, I don't want it to break. Altrocity, thank you for the prime sub. I appreciate it. The TV's not the issue. It's the uh, it's the TV mountain bracket thing that it didn't that it didn't have the brackets. Um, Troll warlord max stacks down by two. Where does this matter the most? Not on any creep, besides Roshan, if you can call him a creep. Uh, it matters on towers. Barracks, Ancient, and on Heroes, the tanky heroes. The supports are probably dead before 10 hits anyways. But the tanky heroes, you essentially lose 60 attack speed on. Hmm. It's not that common to hit the 12 max stacks, but it does matter on some key kills. For example, the late game tanky carry you're trying to kill and you're you're in the battle to the death going. He's not gonna be able to do that as fast. 60 less. That might matter. That might matter. Oh, Tormentor, yeah, that's another one. Underlord, the Abyssal Horde. This one's cool. It is going to get nerfed, though. It's a little too strong. Uh, looks like just a little bit of damage on both, though. So not too bad. I guess it does spawn multiple warriors and archers, but they all target their own thing, at least to start. But I guess once they killed, they could go then find new targets, right? So it probably adds up. Oh, this nerf might matter more. What is this? Cooldown increased from 110. Uh, the same at level one, but now it's 10 seconds more at max level. Okay. And the buff duration. Oh, that's going down. Five, six, seven to just five. And the buff is what? Bonus move speed and damage reduction. Two seconds less. 30% damage reduction in the late game. That's kind of a big deal. Ursa, the Fury Swipes reset time. Okay. I feel like 15 is still plenty. It'll matter in, like, in some cases, but I think 15 is fine in most situations. Especially if he takes the, the facet, what's it called? Bear down? Yeah. With that one. I think it's fine. Magic Missile, stun duration decreased 0.3 at level one. That's like a 25% nerf. Same at max level. Damage down by five. Oh, but it's scaling five. So it's 340 at max level. Level 15 talent, wave of terror reduced a little bit. I find this a little weird because I don't think support venge is broken. I actually think support venge is in a really good spot as just average support, better in certain drafts, worse in others. I think she was being like, she had some play at pro level because SF, TA, Weaver, Slardar, there was a lot of popular negative armor heroes and she synergized well with them. 
but I think she was better as a core hero than a support. And core Venge is hurt by magic missile nerfs, but it's more about the soul strike and the universal stat gain and uh, aura and all that stuff. I I feel they, that makes more sense to me to nerf rather than the support Venge elements. No, sorry, that was Jupiter, <laughs> not your cat. Where is he? He just wants to cause a havoc without ever showing on stream. Maybe one of them was sitting in the cat cam area. No. Maybe they want to push Venge to be a core. I don't know. Visage. Sepulcher. Grave Chill. AoE decrease from 300 to 250. I forgot to set an AoE facet. Faithful followers. Target AoE stun. Doesn't... This one also makes him worth less when you kill him, right? I think I've seen one Visage since the change. If that. Oh yeah, reduce bounty. There it is. Hmm. Champion of Goro nerfed. Ten percent less. Bro oh, who cares? That's fine. Oh no! Fifty-four percent warlock is down to fifty-three point five percent win rate. Chaotic offering. This one might be the nerf. Uh, Golem rescaled. Level one, it's stronger. Max level, it's a little weaker. I don't get it, guys. This is the this is the number one pub support. Ten percent off champion Agora. That's so it's so weak. Slight rebalancing to the ultimate. I don't know. Maybe this is more impactful than I than I realized. This is so. This is whatever. I would guess like less than half a percentage point in win rate drop. Weaver, 0.1 slow off of skitter step. Geminate attack is going to be five less damage. This is so. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Let's finish. Let's finish reading. Okay. Uh, Shikuchi, five more mana cost. Strength. Uh, for, instead of plus eight, it's plus one. And then. Level 20 Geminate is 90 to 80. Whatever, guys. Weaver's still busted. Weaver is busted. This needs to be negative. Geminate attack, level one, level zero, level one, you know what I mean? The one you start with. That needs to be negative damage or the cooldown needs to be way higher. The most impactful nerf here, I think, is this five, five extra mana cost on Shikuchi because it does add up. And you do have some mana issues on Weaver. So you might have to more consistently work in a cheap mana item or mana pool item, depending on your neutral. But otherwise, I still feel like he's he's great. Not counting four times when it's late game for golems. But that's the thing thing a lot of games are decided before that i mean it's true it'll matter there when you have the four golems out but how many games get to agonim's refresher and you have a bunch of regen items again maybe maybe this is something that happens way more than i experience in my games so then that, then it's fair you know but i i don't think that many games get there that it's like this is why the hero is broken i feel like it's earlier than that you're often winning off of the one ultimate or the agonim's ultimate witch doctor okay what did they do to voodoo festeration the radius is down by a hundred at all levels flat reduction and the self heal is from 50 percent to 25 
it's still really effective mana, but it does require you to be closer. That's a good start. I think the radius was too big. Hmm. The mana to damage, though, is still fine. The loss of healing means you maybe have to buy another set of tangos that you were trying to get away without because you had the self-healing. It's a buff because you no longer push waves. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, last hero, what do we got? Wraith King. Mana cost increased from 1A to 200. Sick nerf. <laughs> I mean, that, that'll matter. It'll matter in a couple cases, whatever. Okay, a lot of this was pretty boring, I gotta say. Very small nerfs, which is pretty understandable for a C patch. I'm surprised by what they did and did not address, though. Some heroes got hit harder than others. Like, Phoenix didn't even get touched. That's crazy. Weaver nerfs. Pretty meh. The clockwork nerf, decent. I think clockwork was pretty like a good, a good balance of nerfs. Um, to expanded armature, anyways. I don't know about hookup being affected. Dark willows, bedlam seems pretty. This one seems painful. I still think thorny thicket's good, but the loss of bedlam, ease of use, could be quite painful. Yeah, we'll have to try hookup. I what? What's a good mana item? Is it just arcane boots? Cause to be able to use hook shot on low cooldown with the hookup, it's gonna be expensive. Or is there a refund to it? No, just the cooldown gets refunded, but not the mana cost. How big's a stun AoE too? Yeah, the Willow Bedlam is a little sad. So you now have Axe who initiates first for you. And then you just follow up. Boom. The barrier is pretty tiny. I think they could buff up the barrier a little bit. Okay, is that? Really? I can't believe. I guess it must be 300 from me, not Axe. I guess that makes sense. Ally hits stun radius. When hitting an ally, Hookshot has a larger impact radius, grants clock, and the hit allies. Oh, I can put multiple people here? Oh, wrong. Well, that's fine. You guys can stay. Ah, <laughs> huh. 275 is pretty decent, actually. The level one barrier feels a little weak, but this 275... With the fact it's a seven and a half second cooldown. Hook shot in, run away, just chill for a little bit. Hook shot back in. Cogs an enemy, oh God, get me out of here. Yeah. Hook shot back in. But anytime you cycle through your spells, you would be burning so much mana. So I feel like you're gonna need arcane boots. Or at least a null talisman or something. Or maybe all the items you build have mana in it. I think I'm gonna start with arcane boots. I I'll try hook up the next time we stream or, or play and we can see how it feels. I still think the expanded armature is pretty good.
got him. Clockwork is another hero who the innate ability is like, do I even notice this? I don't think I do. Octarine. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's pretty low. It's pretty low with this. I guess in a late game situation, this could be kind of good. Do something like this. Here's the downside of hookup, guys. You need to have someone on your team who initiates. Otherwise, who are you hooking up to? No one. You're always going to use your ult to initiate. So I think that's going to be the difference maker in pubs. Like, do you actually have someone, like an axe on your team? Someone who's going to stun and go in first and you follow up. I think axe will be a really good pairing because it calls people for the AoE. So you'll actually still stun them. But Clockwork Axe does not sound like a strong lane. So I don't know. Who's it going to be? Is it a mid hero then? Or are you just pulling the off lane? Can't be someone like Mars who spears people away. The CDR works on minions. Buy a Helm of the Dawn. <laughs> Send them in. See, where's the creep waves? <laughs> Let's pretend you had a centaur. You do it yourself. <laughs> Get in there, centaur. I guess you could essentially just use it as a shield. I think if they increase the barrier a little bit, it could be cool. Dig up a kobold and you... Brilliant. There we go. Uh, who else seemed interesting? Naga. Let's go look at Naga. So now I don't have Riptide and I have to manually activate this. Hmm, I don't even have to stop moving. It's instant cast. That's kind of cool. There's 80 damage for 45 mana. That's pretty cost efficient. Level two is 50. Illusions, Ensnare. How much longer does Ensnare last after I deluge someone? So that would be the regular time. Or I know it's like actually, it's five seconds. And I would in theory get an extra second. I guess I could have mathed that out without even having to try to click it. How long does this last? Five seconds of status? Redis resistance reduction. It's kind of interesting. Max HP regen per second. This is with the shard, right? Increases. Oh, no, no, no. You always get the heal. Oh, oh, this is it. This is it. We're back. Deluge net into the meteor. Yeah. I forgot about reel in. So you say. 
How does, if I get cast range, how does that work? I can reel in from further. What's my innate ability? 6% evasion per other Naga Siren. Ah, we're never gonna use that as a support. Oh, I didn't mean to quit. Deluge is pretty high damage for the mana cost. It does, of course, require us to be next to the enemy hero. What are my base stats? 3.6, five armor, 51 damage. I got 330 move speed. Stat gain's okay. I don't even know what boots we need. Do we have mana issues? The scene calls. What am I doing? In the lane, I'm what? Just walking up the hidden people? Sing them under the tower. Okay, surely, surely we could get at least one guy forgetting that reel in is now just part of the kit. If we're position five Naga, we can definitely reel one person in into the tower. Does it work over cliffs? Uh, that's a good question. Cliff the enemy support with reel in. My illusions also deluge, but so in the past, I know support Naga would take mirror image to like trade in the laning stage, but it's cause you didn't need riptide. But I wonder now that deluge is an option. This might be a lot better. Every nine seconds, 140 damage. I guess some heroes have that at their level one spell. But can they reel in under tower? Oh, I can do this while sing songing. Oh, you can. Just seeing if that worked. Just curious. The wind up for song is so long, actually. I forgot this was such a small stun time nowadays. Any way you slice it. I don't know, what is the play? It's probably to not do this. <laughs> Add mana regen? Wait, 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 how much mana regen? Tell me more. 4% of max mana regen, which is what? Uh, 24%? Or 28%? Oh my God. I'm tired, okay? We've done a long stream. That's just an arcane boots, man. I, you need something that gives you mana. What if you did arcane boots? But now we need something that gives us health. Or do we?
30% deluge damage. Indeed. Why did they do it like that? 30% deluge damage. Allows them to target and affect debuff immune. Is that the play? Just work on my ags. Still just like kick the shit out of me, right? I'm not sure what the build would be. I can't see it in my mind of like what I would want to try to do. Uh, you're confused by Willa nerfs. Um, it's pretty, she's a really good support right now. She's in my S tier for position fours and fives. So she needed some kind of nerf. They hit Bedlam being cast on allies, which is really good. I think position four, Dark Willow is still okay. Position five got hurt by that because position four can build items to get close to still use Bedlam. And you can be greedy that way because you're position four. Position five, it's, uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't be doing that. Stack with the illusions. I guess we could. Harass from complete safety with mirror image plus deluge. Deluge. If we add in the illusions, though, that's starting to really add to the mana cost of harassing. But I guess you're right. We're kind of doing it for free. I have four and a half armor with stats, five. Feed enemies gold. <laughs> Let's shelve it for now until I think of a, until I have a better idea. And I'm tired of standing. It's time to sit. How about Monkey King support? Not that he got changed at all. Simeon Stride. Let's just move around the map really quickly. Sniper support. I want to, but I just can't see how it'd be good. I like Sniper. I want to play Sniper. I guess currently what I'm interested in is clockwork hookup. Like that could be fun. A lot of this other stuff is not that interesting. Maybe faceless time zone support. I guess Ironwood Treant is maybe something we can look to try. I think this is probably not enough to justify the little Shredder Max, but maybe. Support heal tinker. Mm. 
All right, maybe, maybe nature's monkey clock are at the top of my list. I guess Zeus 4 didn't get touched. Zeus was also pretty fun. Could maybe do more of that. Let's see who was on here. So I guess now the change would be Dark Willow down. I think Weaver can still be up here. Spirit Breaker probably moves down. Witch Doctor might be down to out of here. Well, I'm gonna have to redo all of this later, but for you guys here on Twitch who you get to see this, this didn't even make it to YouTube. These guys are probably down. Hoodwink, I don't know how much of a nerf that was. But it definitely, it hurt a little. It might still keep her up here, though, in pubs. Uh, Witch Doctor. I don't think Witch Doctor is actually the greatest position for. It's mainly just Voodoo Festoration is broken. So the less and less that is the case, it goes down. Phoenix didn't get nerfed, which makes me want to move Phoenix up. Actually, I don't know why I had Phoenix in B tier anyway. I think she's a pretty good four. Um, Snapfire, though, going up might hurt Phoenix. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to look at it more later. I guess some of these didn't really get touched, though. Um, okay, I was thinking about playing a game with the patch out, but I am still pretty tired. So I think... <laughs> Guys, how funny would it be to go raid King Potato a second time? That's actually really tempting. I'm going to stop for tonight, but tomorrow... I was thinking about making a video tomorrow. The video I had in mind actually doesn't isn't affected by the patch, so I might still do that, but we might also just stream to try the new patch. Um, yeah, it was gonna be, I had two videos I, in mind, either more warding things. In one of the coachings, there was a really good discussion on warding, and I wanted to compile some of those, plus maybe others I could think of into bonus warding tips. Um, the other would have been, shoot, what was the other? <laughs> it's gone. Well, I guess it's not that one. I usually write these down. Where is it? Uh, maybe I didn't have that one written down. I really can't remember what the other one was. It'll come to me later, guys. What about position five? Um, we can do a quick look at it. This one, I still think Warlock is going to be S tier. I think Lich is probably up here still. Both of these heroes might drop down a little bit. They're still S or A tier heroes, one of them. Witch Doctor nerfs, I'm not sure how much that hurts him yet, but he's actually a pretty good pub hero anyways, like even before Voodoo Festoration. He's a classic pub support. So I still would keep him in S to A tier. Dark Willow as a five probably drops down a good amount. It may not matter as much in pub games, but I'd probably move her down to maybe B tier. Phoenix is still up here. Weaver is still up here. Eh, yeah, I'm not going to go through the whole list right now. Io's unchanged. Yeah, for pubs, he's still down there. <laughs> the cask facet's good. I still think the cask facet's good. But the, the Voodoo Festoration was good at a pro level because it destroyed the laning stage. Cask is more, it's much more manageable for pros, but in pubs it works out really well because people will clump together and you get a bunch of, a bunch of uh, bounces and then like the ultimate's going the whole time. Okay, I'm gonna go raid <laughs> It'll be really funny. Yeah, 400 off one bounce. Yeah, if you're really unlucky and you get the last bounce, it's crazy. Silencer back to garbage bin again. I'm not sure. The The cheaper arcane curse might actually be helpful, even though the later levels are more expensive. But if you can use it a little more in the laning stage, that might actually be good. I'm going to have to try it and find out. Maybe he's one we try out. Right, I'm going to start this raid. <laughs> Send you guys back. Everyone, everyone who came... Who was there, then came back, go back. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in for the, the last second uh, patch stream. Uh, maybe tomorrow, if not Wednesday, we'll definitely be back on Wednesday. But tomorrow there might be a stream. Maybe it'll be a short stream. I'll see if I can remember what my video idea was. I was going to give you guys the option of voting on what I do, but now I can't even remember what it was. So first I got to re-brainstorm, and then we'll, then we'll see. All right, guys. I'll, get, I'll see you later. Bye.